happy to be back today on Health Matter on WAP TV. And I have a guest in the house who is a consultant urologist. His name is Dr. Okweemi Taiwo Alabi. He was with us last week in the very first show we had in 2022. And of course, for those of us who were able to watch that particular presentation, the topic was kidney stones, otherwise known as renal calculi. Okay. However, we were not able to finish the topic. And as a result of that, he offered to be back this morning so that we can continue from where we left it. Okay. So I'm going to give an overview of kidney stones. Okay. Before we put our focus on him to continue from where we stopped. Okay, so what are kidney stones? Okay, let me make an attempt to explain for the benefit of those people who may not have joined us. Okay, so what, what is kidney? Okay, kidney is an organ that is found in the humans, both male and female. Ordinarily, everybody should have two. And the location of the kidney is towards, there is an organ that is found within the abdomen or usually behind the span, spine, okay? That's the, uh, the spine at the back, the backbone. On either side of the spine behind you is actually where you have the kidneys located, okay? So you have some other organs in the front. In the left, you have the stomach, you have the pancreas. In the right, you have the liver. So behind and lower down, you have the two kidneys. Now, what, is, what are the functions of the kidney in the human body? Some people describe kidney as a master chemist, okay? Kidney does a whole lot of things in the human body, apart from removing waste and toxins from the human body. It also partake in a number of uh, uh, products. It, it does produce a number of hormones, okay? For instance, it produces a very important hormone that takes part in the making of red, red blood cells. Okay, talking about erythropoietin. It also regulates the water and electrolytes in the human body. Okay, now in the course of doing all of this, removes waste, removes toxins, removes chemicals. It is obvious that our urine contains a whole lot of chemicals that are capable of forming stones. These chemicals are actually what usually come together okay, to form stones in the human body. Okay, there are a number of them, calcium, oxalate, cysteine, which is a form of amino acids, they can come together. And this usually happens when the urine is very concentrated, when we do not take enough water, or when we live in a very hot and hot climatic conditions, when we do plenty of exercise and not take, and end up not taking enough water. So you provide the enabling environment for stones to begin to form in your body. Now, these stones can form within weeks, within months, and sometimes over years. Now, these stones can be as tiny as a sand, little grains of sand. It can be as big as a pebble. Some can even be as, a big, as big as a golf ball, the, the ball that, that, that is used for golf. Okay, so it can be that big. And of course, the symptoms will be determined by the size of the stone, as well as the type of stone. But we have an expert in the building this morning, a consultant urologist who will be doing justice to this topic. He was with us last week. And I want to yield the floor at this stage to my chief. Dr. Labi, you're welcome to Health Matter. You've Thank been you, here sir. plenty of times. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. It's, a, it's always a pleasure Thank you. to We're be happy here. To have you. Yes, I'm, I'm so happy and um, delighted to be with you again. Okay? So, um, and thank you so much for, the, for that overview. It, it's, it's actually captured um, all that we discussed last week. Mm, so I, won't want, I, I wouldn't want to waste further time on that. So we just proceed into what we term as symptomatology. That is the symptoms. The symptoms are a kind of... Um, they are the things that the patient feel within their body and complain to their doctors. So, um, many patients with kidney stones would not have any complaint if the stone is small. 
okay? If the stone is small, maybe like any stone that is less than three millimeters, three, four millimeters, that is about the size of the head of a pin, okay, of a pin, is not likely to cause symptoms. Most especially if it's located in a place in, in, in within the kidney where it is not causing any obstruction. Okay? So many people will have small stones and they will not know until they go for a routine medical checkup in the hospital. Okay? But the thing about stone is they grow. Okay? The stone that is the size of the pin head today can actually grow and completely fill the kidney. Okay, such stones are called stag on stones, stag on calculus. Because it's it's you know, if you look at the the pelvic elysia system, mm -hmm. that That's is uh, let me explain the that. tract within the kidney. Yeah, thank you, sir. Let me pause you a little. Stag is actually a deer, stag horn, looking like a horn of a deer spreading out. Okay, so some stones can happen that way. Okay, we have to bring it lower down so that viewers can, can follow us. Yes. You know, these medical jargons can be confusing <laughs> sometimes. Absolutely. Uh, stag horn uh, stones. Okay, go ahead, sir. Absolutely. So, like, like you rightly said, the inside of kidney is like the horn of a stag, like maybe like, um, um, like an antelope. You know, some yes. of them, the horn is is branching several branches yes. like that so that's how the inside of the kidney is okay so and that such will not be able to to pass out easily yes so a stone that starts like the head of a pin and i want you to take um note of this that starts like the head of a pin can grow to completely cast fill the entire pelvic elysia system and form what we call a stag on calculus. That is, it looks like the horn of a stag. Yes. Okay? And that is capable of damaging the kidney. Okay? So, the symptomatology could be a painless stone when it's small, but by far the most common presentation is pain. Pain. And it is described by the sufferer as one of the most excruciating pain they ever feel. Okay? So, and the pain is usually located at the part of the body we call the flank. Yes. The flank is the part of the body between the lowermost rib, between the ribs, and the pelvic bone. So this part, portion of the body it's called the flank. So the patient essentially feels the pain along the flank, and sometimes the pain can radiate to the, to the roots of their genitals. Okay? So this is the typical presentation of the patient. And the pain waxes and wanes. So it's a colicky pain that grips the patient with such excruciating intensity that some even have to roll on the floor and then it you know quietens a bit and then starts again okay and this synchronizes with the peristaltic movement okay the peristalsis is the squirting of urine from the ureter down to the bladder okay so essentially, stones that cause this kind of pain, they are stones that cause obstruction. Okay? When such stones are formed in the kidney, and then they pass into the pelvis, then through the neck of the kidney, that is, that's what we call the PUJ, then into the ureter, and sometimes they get impacted, they get stuck, that they cannot move further. So they create a kind of dam effect, what we call the back pressure effect, so that the urine that is produced within the kidney is not able to go down. Okay? So, and because of that obstruction, the ureter does not understand it, why it cannot push urine down. So it continues to increase 
the pressure of his contraction, the skirting effect, to overcome that obstruction. And that is what brings the pain to the patient. And so, as this continues, the pressure builds in the kidney. Okay, when the pressure builds like that, this encourages infection. And so, some of these patients can prevent with features of infection. Fever, okay, they can present with fever, then chills and rigor. They'll be having chills, they'll be shaking, okay? So, features of infection, and then some... They will, at, the, at that level, can present also with nausea, one or two episodes of vomiting, and then, then when this obstruction has been sustained for quite a while, it can damage the kidney. Okay, sometimes the, 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 there's a part of the kidney which is the weakest part, which we call the fornix. You know, at this at the edge of the uh, papilla, it can rupture. An infected unit can actually go outside of the kidney and spread around the kidney. Okay, what we call an, the, the perinephric abscess. Okay, so it could ultimately lead to the damage of the kidney. And in some patients, if, and it's not so uncommon to have stone forming in the two kidneys, when stones are formed in the two kidneys and they drop at the same time into the ureter, a scenario we call doubly impacted ureteric stone, it can completely obstruct the flow of urine and present with what we call acute kidney injury, acute renal failure. Okay? So, some patients can present with blood in their urine because if you see the stones microscopically or endoscopically, you see, they have what you call speckles. Some of them have speckles, okay? Uh, most especially the, the, the calcium uh, oxalate um, dihydrate. They are, spe they are speculated. And so they like pinpoint projection from the, kid, uh, from the stone, which can cause abrasion. Or we can injure the, the lining of the urinary tract and thereby causing bleeding. So bleeding could be a presentation of kid, uh, a patient with kidney stones. Some can present with, they can present straight away with, with, um, with uh, features of complications. And that so, bleeding, of course, is passage of blood in urine. Okay, not that the person will be bleeding internally. The person may urinate and notice that he or she is passing out blood. Yes. Okay? And that, that's what we call immaturia. So I was just trying to yes, yes. Um, explain mm. it in, the, in mm. a way that yes. you, it will be understandable mm. to a layman. So I will say that. So if a patient comes to the hospital, what do we do? If this patient that is presenting with such small stone that was accidentally discovered during routine checkup, such patients will have to embrace the what we call stone prevention, uh, stone, um, prevention um, protocol. But before you get to that, we usually hear of uh, bladder stones also. Uh, is it that these stones are also forming in the bladder or is it the stones that formed all the way in the kidney and then gets to track down through the ureters into the bladder? So what is the picture like? Yes, you see, it can be both ways, all right? But... More often than not, the stones in the bladder, they are secondary stones. Okay. So for the bladder stone, it could be primary stones or secondary stones. The primary stones are the stones that are primarily formed within the bladder. And this is found in older men or any, any, anybody who has condition that causes obstruction to the bladder outlet. Okay. Okay. Men who have BPH, men with stricture, children with uh, posterior urethral valves mm -hmm. with and people stricture. people undergoing chemotherapy. Okay. That's Different things. So when there's obstruction to the bladder outlet, there are the stasis of urine. When there are stasis of urine, the stones are likely to form. So those are primary bladder stones. But more often than not, in Younger people, people who don't have obstruction to the bladder outlet, the stones in the bladder is a secondary stone formed in the, the kidney, kidney 
and then it passes through the urinary tract into the bladder. The increase in incidence of stone globally is due to, you know, um, you know, has been alluded, several factors have been alluded, and the most prominent is global warming. Okay, the heart, um, the, the, the heart is becoming, you know, hot. It's hotter than it used to be, okay, because of depletion of ozone layer. And that's why much effort is being dedicated towards um, reduce, reducing carbon emission Just and all minister. that. Uh, it's on that note that I want to open the phone lines. The phone lines are open for our viewers at home and around the world who may wish to make contributions to the program or probably ask questions. Okay, so the phone lines are open. You can see them uh, at, the, uh, at the footnote on your TV set. Okay, so continue, sir. Yes, and this is why much effort is being um, devoted to um, um, reducing carbon emission, which is implicated in um, the destruction of the ozone layer and um, global warming. So people are looking at uh, using clean energy sources, okay? So that is increased temperature. Yes, yes. Has been implicated then, um, you know. Does it have to do with changing our diets? Yes, that's, that's the next point I was okay. going to make. The next point is affluence, okay? And stone is a disease of the affluence. And that's why it's commoner. In, 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 in Western world, it's okay. a disease of affluent. So, because when you when, when you are in an affluent community, you take excess of protein. An average American takes about 300 grams of protein of meat per day. So you can see they already have a, a lot of solutes yes. in their urine that can form stones. So affluence. Then also obesity. With affluence comes excessive consumption of food materials and, uh, you know, weight, weight gain. So obesity, then also comorbidities, hypertension, diabetes. Also, um, as they increase, stone incidence also increase. So, and that exactly. is why um, a lot of, you know, uh, effort has been made into dietary modification to prevent stone formation, like one of the prominent ones that is being done is a dietary approach to prevention of hypertension. Yes, DASH. DASH. Okay, so such embraces um, intake of, high intake of dairy products. And when we talk about dairy products, we mean milk and all that. Dairy, high intake of dairy product reduce intake of um, meat, only more protein generally, and also high intake of fruits and vegetables. Okay, the other time we exhaustive, exhaustively talked about, you know, the kind of fruits that are low in oxalate that are good for our consumption. So, uh, you know, the environmental impact, dietary, and lifestyle are implicated in all this. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, uh, uh, the fact that it runs in families. Yes, genetics, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, looking at the stones, can you do a recap? I know you did that last week of the types of stones, and of course, what will lead to the formation of such stones. Of course, you've mentioned along the line that some of them will have to do with infection. Recurrent urinary tract infection can actually lead to forming one. On that video clip we watched, we saw one of them being said to be uh, more prominent or commonly found in the women than men. But generally, stones are, are found more in males than females. Okay, you also want to make one or two statements along that line, sir? Yes. Um Yes, we'll do a recap on that. Stone, um, stone formation is a product of imbalance between the promoters of stone formation and inhibitors of stone formation. Okay, but before I get to that, let me first talk about the types of st kidney stones. The types are calcium-containing stones, calcium-based stones. Okay, and this by far the commonest. Mm. 
calcium stones. Then the next is um, uric acid stone, followed by um, infective stones, which we call the struv struvite stones. Then we talk about cysteine stones. Now, the things in the urine that, pro that promote stone formation are calcium, oxalate, and salt, and sodium. Calcium, oxalate, and sodium. How do you get sodium in your urine? It's by salt consumption. And exactly. that is why salt consumption is one of the, the modification lifestyle, dietary, I mean dietary, pardon me, dietary modification that the patient that has formed stone has to embrace. You have to limit, you have to reduce salt intake because it's one of the promoters of stone formation. Oxalate, oxalate can be gotten, is gotten majorly from Meat. Just a minute, we have Ada from Abuja. Good morning, Ada. Good morning, sir. Yeah, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So please go ahead with your contribution. Good morning, Ada. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not actually contribution. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. It's not actually a contribution. I want to ask a question. Okay. My question is, uh, can, a scan, can a scan actually dictate a failure in kidney? Can a scan dictate kidney failure or stone in the kidney? Yes. Which Something one? In the kidney. Any problem in the kidney? If your if your kidney is having problem. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Mm. The can scan uh, dictate problems in this in the kidney, sir. Yes, that's, uh, that's it, it, it depends on the scan you are talking about. But generally speaking, you see, the the when you are investigating the disease of the kidney, there are tests you do that are anatomical. And there are other tests you do that are functional, that tend to look into the functional problems of the kidney. So imaging generally gives you an idea of the anatomy okay, of the kidney, essentially, but also can give you an idea of the function, too. Because when you are doing imaging, you inject an agent what we, that we call contrast that the kidney excretes. So the kidney that excretes the contrast, that means it's functioning. Okay, but when the contrast is um, excreted, then it gives you the idea of the pelvic elicia anatomy, which can give you so many other details. Okay, so it depends on the scan you are talking about. There is CT scan that is comp computerized axial tomographic scan. Okay, there is ultrasound scan. Okay, so both of them, ultrasound scan can show you the anatomy of the kidney can show you if there is a mass in the kidney, if there is stone, if the kidney, the pelvic elicia system is dilated. It can show you so many things. But ultrasound, except a contrast enhanced ultrasound, may not give you an idea of the function. You can only hazard a guess based on one or two things you see. Okay, but CT can be both can give you both the functional details and anatomical details. So that's so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, so you were doing Just a recap on kidney. types of kidney stones. We have Johnson from Lagos. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Good morning, sir. Yeah, how are you today? I'm fine, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Please, uh, I find out that, that uh, in my light side test, the... Can you speak louder, sir? In my read, my read, but in my, in my right read, Upper side. Okay. I used to find some things like some internal things that can happen that injury there most of the time. So I have this scan, they said they didn't say anything there. So I even had to go and do some CT, something kind of like that. They said we are likely having 
Okay, so but the, the, the pens usually is on the right side of your body, if I got you correctly. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, um, you see, the right side of the body, there are so many organs there. Okay? Even sometimes, if you do extra and you see something that looks like stone on the right hand side, doesn't mean it's from the kidney. There is also a gallstone. Okay? Exactly. There's a gallstone. The liver is there. The gallbladder is there. Okay? Then the, the, the kidney. Then the, the, the right hepatic flesure, where the ascending colon curves. Mm -hmm. On the right side is there. Let's pause okay. a little. Mohamed so from Sokoto. Good morning, Mr. Mohamed. Uh, good morning. Yeah, how are you today? Uh, fine, sir. Okay, so please go ahead with your question or contribution. Uh, my question, I, I, I have a question to ask. Mm. Uh, my question is that uh, I have been to hospital this year. I am having a uh, uh, kidney. Uh, Bladder stone. Okay. So I don't know. Does bladder stone has a relationship with kidney stone? If it has, then I need more explanation about it. Thank you very much. We've actually talked on that, but I'm sure doctor will do a recap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. How old are you, sir? Uh, 45. 45. Do you have any difficulty passing urine? It's like so, I have. Yes. So, you see, um, we spoke about that the other time. The, the, stone, the formation of stone in the bladder, it can be in two ways. Firstly, it can be a stone that was formed in the kidney that dropped into the bladder. That is called a secondary bladder stone. When the stone is dropped in the bladder, it starts growing and gets bigger. Okay, that's a secondary bladder stone. Whereas, the other option, the second type, is a primary bladder stone. And that is seen in men who have obstruction to their bladder outlet. When they have obstruction to their bladder outlet, they are not able to completely empty their bladder. That's one of the many symptoms. So, when you don't completely empty your bladder, the crystals that form stone they aggregate and they form stone within the bladder. Okay? So, and that is why I, I, I put across that question to you, uh, whether you have mm -hmm. uh, obstruction to the bladder outlet. And of it course, it might be due to age. prostate, it might be due to stricture, urethral stricture and all. So, I think you need to be thoroughly evaluated by your doctor and then necessary treatment uh, mm -hmm. offered. Or possibly you can also see a urologist if you have one around you. Okay, so that will make your make the the treatment a lot easier. Mm. Okay, so back to the question you were trying to answer the last time mm, before the other question came in. I think there was one that we didn't finish dealing with. You want? Okay, uh, I think it was from um, the one that talked about um, uh, the yes. You on see, the right. on the right mm. side, on the right side. Also, your lower ribs are there. The muscles, there is a huge mass of muscle on the, on the right side. Some patients have actually had musculoskeletal pain, and they come, you know, they are afraid. They don't know whether they have um, kidney stones because that's the same location of the stone. So we need to find out, is the history examination and appropriate investigations that will guide us. So we cannot do justice to that on this program. Thank you very much. Now, you need to see your mm, urologist. Mm. Now, talking about, uh, since we have delved into that, what are the common tests that can be done in a hospital setting or a diagnostic center to make a diagnosis of kidney stones? Just an overview. We may not go into details. So um, I think I, I, I spoke about yes. that a little bit. Yes, yes, you've dealt so with some of the, them. The main stay of diagnosis of a patient who is suspected to have kidney stone 
is Helica CT scan or what we call CAT scan, computerized axial tomographic scan. Okay, non-contrast, non-contrast helico CT scan. That is the mainstay of the diagnosis. Thank you very much. I'll post a little your name's sake. Okay, me from Ogun State. How are you today? From Lagos State. How are you too? Okay, Fine. from Lagos. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yes. So go ahead. All right. Yes. The thing is that yeah, I have a question. I'm fine. We can hear you. Go ahead, yes. ma. Yes. I have a question. The question is that can it possible for someone to have one kidney? Okay. I said, can it possible for someone to have one kidney? Yeah, we got it. We got you. Okay. Any other one? Uh, that's my question. Okay. For Doc can to detect one kidney, is it possible? Yeah, thank you very much. Doctor will take that. Mm, suffice to say that we got that question last week. Yes. Mm. Yes. So, so I, I, I will answer that in passing, but let's just continue with what we were saying. Mm. Non-contrast CT scan. And what it does is, unfortunately, I would have been able to project a, a short mm. video. Mm of uh, what a CT scan looks like, okay? And it can be reformatted into different um, um, format to give, you know, more information about the stone. So what CT will do is it will show you, it will, it will show the stone as um, a whitish structure within the kidney, with, within the urinary tract, rather. Okay, when you have stones within the kidney, that's nephro carcinosis, that's a medical problem, mm. okay? So uh, it should not be confused with, kidney, with um, uh, urological stones, okay? And the video that is shown is the stone. You can see that golden yellow structure is the stone within the pelvis of the kidney and it's projecting into the neck of the kidney. That's the PUJ. And that blue... Um, Probe. Probe, like a fiber you are seeing, is the laser fiber. You can see as that laser fiber, you know, fires against the stone, is breaking it into dust. Okay, so I just needed to make uh, a That's comment part on of that. The, yes, part of uh, one of the options procedure. of treatment yes, of um, kidney stones. Mm. So um, CT shows stone as whitish structure. Very rarely there are stones that will not show as whitey structure, okay? But generally, stone will show as whitish structure within the collecting system of the kidney. And then the CT also shows you some, some other anatomical details of the kidney. It can show you that there's an obstruction that needs to be taken care of. Because if there's an obstruction and the stone is due to an obstruction, it's not enough to remove the stone without removing the obstruction. If you don't remove the obstruction, stones will form again. Okay? So CT will show you all these details. Before now, IVU, intravenous urogram, you know, um, used to be uh, an investigative modality of choice. But CT is it has completely taken over as over. the gold standard for investigating kidney stones. So however, there are some other tests, adjoining tests you can do, blood tests, urine mm -hmm. tests, and all that. Just a minute, Bumi from Lagos. Good morning, Bumi. How are you today? Are you there? Yeah, good morning. Sir. Yeah, good morning. Please go ahead. Yeah. Please, I want to ask a question. Yes, go ahead. I went to hospital, I have a kidney stone. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. I have a kidney stone. Mm. They, they told me that I have the one is my kidney, one is my bladder. Is it, is it not possible for them to do the operation? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Doctor will take that, but let me call your attention to the other question before we yes. move on. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll, I'll answer okay. the two together. Yeah, thank you. Is, the previous question is, is it possible to have one kidney? Mm. Yes, pretty much. You could have one kidney 
because you were born with one kidney, okay, during embryological development, that is when you are inside your mother and you are growing, your organs are growing, one kidney can suddenly have maybe a vascular accident. That is, the blood supply to it is cut short and it doesn't grow. That's what we call renal agenesis. agenesis. Okay? And then it shrinks and then it, it's not able to grow. Okay? And it's only one that eventually grows and becomes, you know, a, an organ, functional organ that sustains your body. Okay? So, and also, some people can have a disease, like if you have stone in one kidney that is dropped into the ureter, that completely obstructs that ureter, damages that kidney. So, even though there are two bean shaped structures, you know, in your flank, one is completely damaged, it's still there, but it's, it's been damaged. So, that is a functional solitary kidney. That is, you have two kidneys there, but one is only one that is functional. So functionally, you have one kidney, even though anatomically, you have two kidneys. And okay? one can also donate. Yes, some people can donate and, and by that they have one left. So solitary kidney mm. is possible. And then if you have one kidney, it can work for you. There are two videos, actually. This one, you can see that golden yellow structure. That's the stone, okay? The other blackish structure is that was the guide wire. But you can see now, you see that blue structure, probe. Okay, it's a fiber actually. That's what we call laser fiber. And you can see as we are firing it towards the stone, is fragmenting the stone, is breaking it into dust, fine particles that can easily be washed out by the urine produced by the kidney. Okay, you can see that stone, it's completely obstructing the, fl the it's filling the entire lumen of the ureter. Yes, the space. That's the ureter, it's completely filling the space. So that it's difficult for urine to pass around that stone. And that's how it completely obstructs the kidney and damages it. So, and that takes me to the question of the lady that asked whether surgery could be done concurrently could for be done at the same sitting. Uh, for, for both a, kidney for and both kidney and mm. Yes. That is the advantage of the current technology that we have, mm. even at our disposal mm. in Lagos here. Okay, I'm afraid okay. that's the much we can take for today. Thank you so, so much for coming around for a second so time. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much. So viewers, we'll be back next week.